You know, I told y'all a long time ago in my very first Era of Man video that the agenda of the end times would be uh, the LGBT. And uh, it's because of the whole Lucifer, Luciferian, half man, half woman beast known as Baphomet, which is worshiped by, you know, Illuminati. Um, the goat is also, Golda Menendez and uh, different representations of it are worshiped in Freemasonry and all the secret societies in some form or fashion. And this represents just a hybrid being uh, that um, was created by the uh, angels that came down in Genesis 6 and uh, slept with the women and created these hybrid beings that ultimately led to the flood of mankind to destroy mankind and, and start mankind all over again with Noah and his family who weren't tainted by this um, these actions that were going on spiritually. So the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the son of man. So we are here now. The days of the coming of the son of man are here now. Uh, the days of Noah are here now. And uh, we're beginning to see this. We're beginning to see how they are trying to make hybrid beings and uh, people taking their bodies and mutilating their genitals and different things to transform themselves into these hybrid uh, creatures, these uh, half man, half woman, uh, woman with uh, or man with both abilities of a man or a woman uh, fused together. This is the hybrid being uh, that was of that day and that is worshiped in all satanic cults and all witchcraft. They actually worship these beings. And so this particular video I'm about to show you is about it, uh, about the genital, genital mutilation. And uh, Rand Paul was actually questioning a, um, a transgender who is actually uh, seeking a high position in our government, uh, a man that's, you know, sits there and really believes that he has transformed himself into a woman is actually speaking and uh, Rand Paul is actually concerned about young people and children and making these decisions uh, that um, that they're trying to give them the power to do. And if you watch closely in this particular video, uh, this, this transgender is programmed uh, to not even answer the question and is beckoning him, if I, if I get elected or if I'm brought into office, I'll talk to you about this but will not answer the question because of the, just the possession that is here. Check it out, it's very creepy. Genital mutilation has been nearly universally condemned. Genital mutilation has been condemned by the WHO, the United Nations Children's Fund, the United Nations Population Fund. According to the WHO, genital mutilation is recognized internationally as a violation of human rights. Genital mutilation is considered particularly egregious because, as the WHO notes, it is nearly always carried out on minors and is a violation of the rights of children. Most genital mutilation is not typically performed by force, but as WHO notes, that by social convention, social norm, the social pressure to conform, to do what others do and have been doing, as well as the need to be accepted socially and the fear of being rejected by the community. American culture is now normalizing the idea that minors can be given hormones to prevent their biological development of their secondary sexual characteristics. Dr. Levine, you have supported both allowing minors to be given hormone blockers to prevent them from going through puberty, as well as surgical destruction of a minor's genitalia. Like surgical mutilation, hormonal interruption of puberty can permanently alter and prevent secondary sexual characteristics. The American College of Pediatricians reports that 80 to 95 percent of prepubertal children with gender dysphoria will exper experience resolution by late adolescence if not exposed to medical intervention and social affirmation. Dr. Levine, do you believe that minors are capable of making such a life-changing decision as changing one's sex? Well, Senator, thank you for your interest in this question. Um, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field um, with robust research and uh, standards of care that have been developed. And if I am fortunate enough to be confirmed as the Assistant Secretary of Health, I will look forward to working with you and your office and coming to your office and discussing the particulars of the standards of care for transgender yeah, medicine. The specific question was about minors. Let's be a little more specific since you evaded the question. Do you support the government intervening to override the parent's consent to give a child puberty block 
doctors, cross-sex hormones, and or amputation surgery of breasts and genitalia. You have said that you're willing to accelerate the protocols for street kids. I'm alarmed that poor kids with no parents who are homeless and distraught, you would just go through this and allow that to happen to a minor. I would hope that you would have compassion for Kira Bell, who's a 23-year-old girl who was confused with her identity. At 14, she read on the internet about something about transsexuals. She thought, well, maybe that's what I am. She ended up getting these puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones. She had her breasts amputated. But here's what ultimately she says now. And this is a very insightful from decision from someone who made a mistake but was led to believe this was a good thing by the medical community. I made a brash decision as a teenager, as a lot of teenagers do, trying to find confidence and happiness, except now the rest of my life will be negatively affected, she said, adding that the medicalized gender transitioning was a very temporary, superficial fix for a very complex identity issue. What I'm alarmed at is that you're not willing to say absolutely minors shouldn't be making decisions to amputate their breast or to amputate their genitalia. For most of our history, we believe that minors don't have full rights and the parents need to be involved. So I'm alarmed that you won't say with certainty that minors should not have the ability to make the decision to take hormones that will affect them for the rest of their life. Will you make a more firm decision on whether or not minors should be involved in these decisions? Senator, uh, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field. Uh, and if confirmed to the position of Assistant Secretary of Health, I would certainly be pleased to come to your office and to talk with you and your staff about the standards of care and the complexity of this field. Let it go into the record that the witness refused to answer the question. The question is a very specific one. Should minors be making these momentous decisions? For most of the history of medicine, we wouldn't let you have a cut sewn up in the ER. But you're willing to let a minor take things that prevent their puberty, and you think they get that back? You give a woman testosterone enough that she grows a beard, you think she's going to go back looking like a woman when you stop the testosterone? You have permanently changed them. Infertility is another problem. None of these drugs have been approved for this. They're all being used off-label. I find it ironic that the left that went nuts over hydroxychloroquine being used possibly for COVID are not alarmed that these hormones are being used off-label. There's no long-term studies. We don't know what happens to them. We do know that there are dozens and dozens of people who've been through this who, who regret that this happened and a permanent change happened to them. And you know, if you've ever been around children, 14-year-olds can't make this decision. In the gender dysphoria clinic in England, 10% of the kids are between the ages of 3 and 10. We should be outraged that someone's talking to a 3-year-old about changing their sex. So I told you in uh, a couple of videos that once they come after the children, that's when you're going to see the end. And this is showing you right here. They are after the children. And they're, they're trying to create the days of Noah all over again to create these bodies that these beings can come and live in and dwell in. As you see from this video, that there is a being in an entity in this body. And this being has fashioned this body to match uh, the intent of it and uh, it is just sad to see, sad to see that you have to sit there and talk intelligently with someone that has gone illogically against their whole existence as a human being and then pretend to be happy with that decision and then all try to offer that decision to young adolescents that aren't eight, old enough to make those decisions. I mean, if they're old enough to make the decision about a sex change or hormones or, or what they want to be, then why can't they smoke? Why can't they drink? Why can't they go to the club and party? And the, the, the real Trojan horse for them is why can't they be sexually active at age six or seven with an adult? And that's what they ultimately want. So y'all, we need to pray for our children. We need to pray for this world. We need to pray for America and uh, abroad all over the world. Y'all, these, these these are some sickening times that we are in, and unless uh, God comes, or Jesus comes, we're going to just see more of it. So let's pray uh, for the state of our world and pray for our children.